Jacob Hall lay bleeding out, abandoned and alone among the scorched ruins of the once thriving human colony on Kepler 22b. His vision blurred as he bled from countless wounds, plasma rounds peppered through his armor and into his flesh by ruthless Komar soldiers. His fellow Marines all lay dead around him. Humanity was losing this war badly, and the Komar Empire seemed unstoppable. It was the year 2347. Humanity had just begun spreading to the stars with newly discovered faster-than-light travel, but they quickly learned that the galaxy already had countless spacefaring species, many of them hostile. Humans were the new kids on the galactic block, small, weak, technologically and militarily inferior, easy prey for the warlike alien empires that ruled the cosmos. The Koma were the worst of them, a cruel genocidal race hell-bent on wiping out humanity and taking their worlds. Colony after human colony fell to the Koma's advanced weaponry and overwhelming numbers. Billions of humans died or were enslaved. The colony on Kepler 22b had been humanity's furthest outpost, their first foothold in Komar space, a bastion of hope. Now it was a graveyard. The Komar had struck without warning, hammering the small defense force from orbit before invading with millions of bloodthirsty troops. The human marines fought valiantly, but never stood a chance. Within hours, the colony was lost. He was fading away when his damaged radio crackled to life. This is Captain Alara of the Vel Dominion cruiser Indomitable Will to any human survivors. We heard your distress call and stand ready to assist. Hold tight, the cavalry is coming. Jacob couldn't believe his ears. Who the hell were the Vel? Why would aliens be helping humans? It made no sense. But he didn't care. He finally let himself slip into unconsciousness, not expecting to wake again. But wake he did, days later in the med bay of an alien ship. An alien with lavender skin, forearms and glowing eyes looked down at him with concern. Rest easy, human, you're safe now. I am Alara. When your people saved my life cycles ago, I swore that one day I would repay that debt. That day has come. Your old enemies, the Komar, will regret their cruelty, and the Vel will stand with humanity against them. This I vow. As Jacob slipped back into a healing trance, he almost smiled. The galaxy was still cold and dangerous for his species. But maybe, just maybe, humanity wasn't alone after all. Jacob pauses his story to take a swig of his drink, leaving Fornax hanging on his every word. The young Komar soldier leans forward, eager to hear more. I continue my tale, describing how the strange signal grew stronger and clearer as I lay dying among the ruins of Kepler 22b. It was a distress call, but not from any human. It was from a Komar. Specifically, a young Komar princess named Valara, who had been taken hostage by a rival faction within the Komar Empire. Valara had managed to hijack a communication array and was broadcasting a desperate plea for help across all frequencies. I, barely clinging to consciousness, listened in disbelief as Valara described her predicament. She had been betrayed by her own people and was being used as a political pawn in a game of power. She knew that her captors would kill her as soon as she outlived her usefulness and she had no one else to turn to. In a shocking twist, Valara offered a deal to whoever received her message. If they could rescue her, she would provide them with valuable intelligence on the Komar Empire's military secrets and help them strike a blow against her cruel and oppressive people. I, with nothing left to lose, made a split-second decision. Using my last ounce of strength, I activated my suit's emergency beacon, broadcasting my location to any nearby human ships. I then recorded a message, telling whoever found me about Valara's offer and urging them to mount a rescue mission. As I slipped into unconsciousness, I could only hope that my message would be received in time. I pause again, letting the weight of the moment sink in. Fornax, completely engrossed in the story, asks what happened next. I smile wryly and signal the bartender for another round of drinks. Well, I say, that's where things got really interesting. The next thing I knew, I was waking up in the medical bay of the USS Prometheus. I blinked my eyes, the harsh lights of the ship blinding me momentarily. 
a gruff voice spoke up from beside my bed. Good, you're awake. I'm Captain Elias Stone. We received your message about the Komar Princess. We're on our way to rescue her now. I tried to sit up, wincing as pain shot through my still healing wounds. Where are we? How long was I out? You've been unconscious for a few days. We're approaching the planet where Princess Valara is being held. It's not going to be an easy extraction. Captain Stone proceeded to lay out the plan. The Prometheus would attack the Komar stronghold head-on, drawing their forces into a pitched battle. Meanwhile, a small infiltration team led by me would sneak into the facility and retrieve the princess. I frowned. I'm not sure I'm in any condition to lead a strike team, Captain. Stone fixed me with a steely gaze. You're the only one who speaks their language and knows their customs. We need you on this, Sergeant Hall. Immediately. Get suited up and meet your team in the armory. We've got some new toys for you to play with. An hour later I was in the armory, marvelling at the array of advanced weaponry laid out before me. My eye was drawn to one weapon in particular, a sleek, deadly-looking plasma rifle. The weapons master noticed my interest. That's the PX-12 prototype plasma rifle. It'll slice through Komar armour like it's made of paper. It's yours for this mission. As I rejoined my team, I could feel the tension in the air. We all knew what was at stake. This mission could turn the tide of the war, but it could also be a one-way trip. I paused my story, taking a long pull from my drink. Fornax leaned forward, his eyes wide. Were you scared? he asked. I chuckled, the sound rumbling deep in my chest. Scared? Of course I was scared but I also knew that this was our chance to strike back at the bastards who had been terrorizing us for so long. And I had faith in my team and in the indomitable human spirit. I set my glass down, my eyes distant as I recalled the memory. And so, with a silent prayer on our lips, we boarded the dropship and launched ourselves into the jaws of hell. The infiltration had begun. The facility's alarms blared as Jacob and his team snuck down the dimly lit corridors, their footsteps muffled by advanced stealth tech. Sweat beaded on Jacob's brow, his grip tightening on his plasma rifle. The prison block was close now. Suddenly a bone-chilling roar echoed through the halls. Around the corner lumbered a monstrous creature, a Grendel, the Komar's genetically engineered guard dog. Its hide rippled with muscle as it sniffed the air, seeking the intruders. Shit, Jacob hissed. Flank it, hit it from all sides. I'll take it head on. His team moved into position, plasma rifles humming with deadly energy. Jacob charged, a battle cry on his lips as he fired bolt after bolt into the Grendel's thick hide. The beast was terrifyingly fast, its claws swiping at Jacob with blinding speed. He rolled and dodged, the searing heat of plasma fire filling the corridor. The Grendel roared in pain and rage, but kept coming. Jacob's rifle clicked empty. The Grendel lunged, its razor claws slicing across Jacob's chest, through armor and into flesh. Searing agony engulfed him, but still he fought, slamming the butt of his rifle into the creature's skull again and again, until it finally crumpled, dead. Panting, bleeding, Jacob staggered to his feet. His team gathered around him, patching his wounds with hurried efficiency. I'm fine, he growled, pushing them away. The princess, we're close. They forged ahead, Jacob's blood dripping on the cold metal floor. As they neared the cell block, plasma fire erupted around them. The Komar guards had found them. Take cover, Jacob roared, diving behind a bulkhead as energy bolts stitched deadly patterns in the air. His team returned fire, the confined space erupting into a storm of plasma and shrapnel. They were outnumbered and outgunned. Jacob knew they couldn't last long. This was it, the end of the line. A new sound joined the din of battle, the crack of Komar rifles but coming from behind enemy lines. The guards turned in confusion, only to be mowed down by precision shots. Through the smoke strode Princess Valera, a stolen rifle in her hands, her eyes blazing with determined fire. Looked like you could use some help, she said, reaching out a hand to Jacob. He took it, rising to his feet with a pained grunt. I had it under control, he muttered. Valara laughed, 
the sound somehow bright despite the carnage. Sure you did. Now come on, your ship is waiting. Together they ran, Valara guiding them through maintenance tunnels and back passages, avoiding the rapidly spreading alert. At last they emerged into the hangar, the Prometheus visible through the atmosphere containment field, its weapons still hammering the Komar defences. As the rescue team boarded, Jacob allowed himself a moment of satisfaction. They had done it, struck a blow against the Komar, and recovered a vital asset. The war was turning. But as he watched Valara, noting the hard set of her jaw and the fire in her eyes, he knew their fight was just beginning. The Komar would be out for blood now, and Valara, she had her own scores to settle. The Prometheus leapt for orbit, leaving the battered Komar stronghold behind. In the ship's medbay, as the doctors tended to his wounds, Jacob. As the crash echoed across the planet's surface, the small human strike team lay dazed among the twisted wreckage of their shuttle. Acrid smoke filled the air, the distant sounds of Komar alarms blaring. Jacob struggled to his feet, ignoring the fresh oozing of crimson blood from his half-healed wounds. He yanked a jagged shard of metal from his shoulder with a grunt, tossing it aside. Around him, his team members slowly extricated themselves from the debris, checking weapons and gear. Miraculously, no one seemed badly hurt. Valara emerged last, her once fine garments now torn and stained, but her eyes still blazed with fierce determination. No time to waste, she barked. That crash will have alerted every Kilmar for miles. We need to move now. Jacob nodded, slapping a fresh power cell into his plasma rifle, you heard the lady, move out, stick to the plan, get to the research labs, go. Quickly, silently, the small squad moved out, using the cover of the smoking wreckage to slip away into the jagged landscape. The towering grey bulk of the secret Komar facility loomed in the distance, a stark monolith of despair. Twice they had to hunker down as sleek enemy craft whizzed overhead, searchlights probing but Valara's knowledge of the land kept them hidden, out of sight. An hour of tense, grueling progress brought them to the outskirts of the facility itself. Up close it was even more imposing, all gleaming alloy and thrumming power, bristling with advanced weaponry. The Star Crusher is held in the central labs, the most heavily guarded section, Valara whispered, pointing out a shielded structure at the heart of the complex. We'll need to fight our way in, but if we can reach the control room... I can overload the system and destroy the weapon before it's completed. Jacob eyed the layers of defences, the patrolling war machines and elite Komar shock troops. It would be a near-impossible gauntlet to run. He glanced at his men, saw the readiness in their eyes, the willingness to face hell itself for the sake of their species. He felt a swell of pride. Humanity would not go quietly into the night. All right, here's the plan. I trail off, taking another swig of my drink as Fornax hangs on my every word. The young Komar's eyes are wide, his breath shallow. The bar seems to fade away as he finds himself drawn into the distant past, to the fateful assault on the Star Crusher facility. What plan, he urges, what did you do? I set down my glass, a wry smile tugging at my weathered features. Her, what we always do, kid, something crazy. I smile wryly at Fornax's eagerness, taking a moment to gather my thoughts before continuing the tale. As my team infiltrated deeper into the Komar facility, the resistance only intensified. Alarms blared and red lights flashed as heavily armed guards swarmed the corridors, their plasma rifles spitting deadly bolts of energy. We pushed forward, our own weapons blazing, cutting down the Komar soldiers with ruthless efficiency. But even our advanced human weaponry and battle-hardened skills were put to the test as we neared the central lab. A new threat emerged, towering monstrous figures that moved with blinding speed and shrugged off plasma bolts like they were nothing. These were no ordinary coma, but something far deadlier, genetically engineered super-soldiers, bred for the sole purpose of warfare. They charged us, their eyes glinting with murderous intent, massive fists and razor-sharp claws, rending through armor and flesh with terrifying ease. My men fell, one by one, their cries of pain and fury echoing through the halls. 
Soon only a handful of us remained, backed into a corner, our weapons running low on power. I gritted my teeth, preparing to make my final stand as two of the hulking abominations bore down on me, their faces twisted into leering skull grins. Just as their claws descended, a blinding flash of light erupted behind them. The super-soldiers staggered, sparks flying from deep gashes suddenly carved into their backs. They toppled, revealing Valara standing there, a shimmering Komar energy blade humming in her grip. Looked like you could use a hand, she quipped, offering me a quick smile before spinning to decapitate another charging super-soldier. Together, Valara and I fought our way into the central lab, a whirlwind of desperate violence and snarling determination. And there it was, the Star Crusher, a pulsating monstrosity of alien science, its eerie blue glow painting the room in ghostly shadows. Komar scientists scattered as we burst in, some reaching for weapons, others frantically trying to initiate the weapon's firing sequence. Valera sprinted for the control panel, her fingers flying across the alien controls. I bought her time, my plasma rifle turning Komar guards into smoldering ash. But more kept pouring in, a seeming endless tide of fanatical soldiers. Almost there, Valara called over the chaos, sweat pouring down her face. Just need to bypass the final failsafe and... The doors blasted open, a fresh wave of guards storming in, energy blades crackling. We were out of time. I dove behind a sparking console, feeling the searing heat of near misses scorching past my head. Valara worked furiously, even as plasma bolts stitched a deadly pattern around her. An energy blade slashed down, nearly taking off her arm, but still she persisted. I popped up from cover, my rifle a dragon's breath of destruction, felling guard after guard, but there were too many. They closed in, their blades hungry for blood. At the last possible second, Valara slammed her fist onto the control panel with a victorious shout. A deep, rumbling vibration shook the entire facility. The Star Crusher shuddered, cracks of blinding light spreading across its surface as the self-destruct sequence kicked in. Time to go, I roared, grabbing Valara and sprinting for the exit. We barely made it to the shuttle before the world turned white, a cataclysmic explosion reducing the entire facility to molten slag and ashes. As the dust settled and the adrenaline faded, the weight of it all hit me. The Star Crusher was no more, the Komar's terrible plan foiled. We had struck a mighty blow this day. But gazing at the haggard faces of my surviving men, at the blood and scars we now bore, I couldn't help but wonder, at what cost had this victory come, and what fresh hells awaited us in the battles to come. Fornix listens enraptured, as I continue my tale. The jubilant mood aboard the Prometheus was infectious as we celebrated our victory over the Komar. The Star Crusher, the Empire's terrible superweapon, was nothing more than atoms scattered across the cosmos. Princess Valara had made good on her promise, delivering crucial intel that allowed us to deal a crippling blow to our enemy. Captain Stone himself congratulated us, his usual gruff demeanor replaced by a broad smile as he shook our hands. Damn fine work, Sergeant Hall. You and the Princess may have just turned the tide of this whole blasted war. But even as we basked in the afterglow of our triumph, the shadow of the Komar still loomed over us. We all knew their retribution would be swift and merciless. Sure enough, mere hours into our voyage back to Earth, an urgent distress call pierced through the revelry. A human colony, not far from our position, was under siege by a Komar armada. The colonists' desperate pleas for help crackled across the comms, punctuated by the sound of explosions and screams. Stone's face hardened into a mask of determination. Looks like the celebration will have to wait. Helmsman, lay in a course for that colony, double time. Tactical, I want weapons hot and shields at maximum. We're not losing any more humans to these bastards. The Prometheus surged through the void, her engines straining as we pushed them to their limits. In the armory, Jacob and his marines prepped for ground combat, checking weapons and sealing their armor. Valara was there too, now clad in a suit of human armor hastily modified to fit her slender frame. Her eyes met Jacob's as they readied their gear. 
I suppose I should thank you for the timely rescue back there, she said wryly. That's twice now you've saved my life. Jacob shrugged, slotting a fresh power cell into his rifle. All part of the job, princess. Besides, I reckon you've more than repaid the favor. Their banter was cut short by the bone-jarring shudder of the Prometheus dropping out of warp. The viewscreens flared to life, revealing a scene of utter chaos. The colony hung before them, its domes cracked open and venting atmosphere. Komar warships swarmed around it like angry hornets, pummeling the battered human defences with a ceaseless barrage of plasma fire. But it was what drifted among the wreckage that turned Jacob's blood to ice. Her seething, writhing cloud of what looked like metallic dust swirled through the shattered streets and ruined buildings. Where it passed, everything simply vanished, dissolved into nothingness, Humans fled before it in terror, only to be consumed by the voracious swarm. Dear God, someone whispered, what is that thing? A nanobot swarm, Valara said grimly, an experimental Komar weapon. It devours matter at the molecular level, leaving nothing behind. Stone's face was ashen, but his voice remained steady. We can't let that monstrosity reach the colonists. All hands, battle stations... Launch fighters and bring us in range for broadside fire. Let's show these Komar how humans fight. Space lit up with the fire of a thousand suns as the Prometheus and her fighter wings engaged the Komar fleet. The human ships were outnumbered and outgunned, but they fought with a desperate ferocity, throwing themselves against the enemy with reckless abandon. In the midst of the chaos, dropships ferried Jacob, Valara and their team of marines down to the besieged colony. They hit the ground running, plasma rifles spitting death as they charged into the fray. All around them, the nanobot swarm surged and roiled, a tidal wave of ravenous machines. They poured into buildings, emerging moments later, leaving only skeletons of steel and plastic. Colonists ran in blind panic, many only to be overtaken and consumed. Jacob and his squad fought like demons, blasting apart Komar soldiers and drones, even as they struggled to stay ahead of the swarm. But for every enemy they felled, a dozen more took their place. It was a losing battle, and they all knew it. Suddenly Stone's voice crackled over the comms. All ground teams fall back to the evac points immediately. We have a plan to deal with the swarm, but it's going to be tight. What's the plan, sir? Jacob shouted over the din of battle. We're going to detonate an EMP, fry every circuit on the planet, It'll take out the swarm and the Komar ships, too. But, sir, won't that also knock out the Prometheus? We'll be... Dead in space, I know, but it's the only way. Now get your asses back up here, double time. Jacob exchanged a look with Valara. An unspoken agreement passed between them. Belay that order, Captain, Jacob said into the comms. The Princess and I are going to plant the EMP ourselves... Give us the coordinates and get the colonists to safety. Sergeant, I gave you a direct. With respect, sir, there's no time to argue. We're doing this. Haul out. Jacob cut the link, turning to Valara. You don't have to do this. I can... She silenced him with a look. We started this together. We'll end it together. He nodded, a grim smile tugging at his lips. Then let's go be heroes... They fought their way to the Komar flagship, a monstrous dreadnought bristling with weapons. The EMP, little more than a jerry-rigged fusion bomb, felt heavy on Jacob's back as they sliced through hull plating and burst into the enemy ship. Komar soldiers swarmed to meet them, a tide of slashing claws and plasma fire. Jacob and Valara cut through them in a whirlwind of violence, their armor scorched and rent, their bodies pushed to the limits of human endurance. At last they reached the ship's reactor, a pulsing heart of dark energy. As Jacob prepped the EMP for detonation, a final figure stepped from the shadows to block their path. It was a coma unlike any Jacob had seen before, towering and broad, with muscles that rippled beneath glossy black scales. It hefted a crackling energy glaive, its eyes glinting with malice. "'You've caused us a great deal of trouble, little primates,' it said, its voice a rumbling growl. But your pathetic resistance ends here. The swarm will devour your worlds, 
and the Komar will feast on the bones of your species. Jacob raised his rifle, but the alien moved like lightning. The glaive slashed down, cleaving through the gun and deep into Jacob's armor. He cried out in pain, staggering back. The Komar pressed its attack, a blur of slashing claws and hammering blows. Jacob met it hand to hand, his combat knife flashing. But he was outmatched. The creature was too strong, too fast. One blow sent him crashing to the deck, his blade skittering away. The alien loomed over him, glaive raised for the killing blow. Jacob closed his eyes, waiting for the end. But the blow never fell. He heard Valara's battle cry, heard the clash of blade on blade. His eyes snapped open to see the princess locked in desperate combat with the Komar champion. You have to, it's the only way. Tears glinted in her eyes as she looked at him. Jacob, please let me do this, let me save my people. The Komar's glaive came down like a guillotine. Valara screamed. Valara! Jacob's anguished cry echoed through the chamber. But there was no time to help her, no time for anything but the mission. With a final wrenching effort, he lunged for the EMP, slamming his fist down on the detonator. The world went white. When Jacob awoke, he was adrift in a sea of debris, alone in his sealed armor as the wreckage of the Koma flagship tumbled around him. Of Valara, he could see no sign. Sergeant Hall, do you read? Captain Stone's voice tense with worry. Hall, come in. I read you, Captain, he said dully. Mission accomplished. The swarm, the coma, they're gone. He closed his eyes, fighting back the grief that threatened to overwhelm him. She didn't make it, sir. She sacrificed herself to... to save us all. There was a long pause. Understood, Sergeant. Her sacrifice will not be forgotten. We're sending out search and rescue ships now. Just hang tight. But as Jacob drifted there, amidst the ruins of his greatest victory and most bitter loss... He couldn't help but wonder if it had all been worth it, if anything could ever be worth the price they had paid. I pause my story, signalling the bartender for another round. Young Fornak sits enraptured, his drink forgotten. I take a sip and continue my tale. The Komar supply depot loomed before us, a monolithic structure bristling with defences. But we had the element of surprise on our side. With our Krogan allies, we stormed the facility, catching the Komar off guard. Plasma fire lit up the corridors as we pushed deeper into the depot, cutting down Komar guards left and right. I could feel the adrenaline pumping through my veins, my senses heightened to a razor's edge. We reached the storage bays, a cavernous space filled with advanced Komar technology. Working quickly, we located the components we needed, exotic matter containment units, zero-point energy cores, things that could bend the very fabric of space-time. But as we were making our escape, all hell broke loose. A shadow detached itself from the darkness, resolving into a familiar, hate-filled face. It was the Komar captain, the same one I had faced on the flagship, and he had brought friends, a squad of genetically enhanced Komar super-soldiers, their bodies rippling with unnatural muscle. Did you really think it would be that easy, human? The captain snarled, his voice dripping with malice. Hawkins stepped forward, his rifle leveled at the captain's head. This ends now, you son of a bitch. We're walking out of here with what we came for. The captain laughed, a cold, cruel sound. You'll die trying, old man. And then they were upon us, a whirlwind of claws and plasma fire. We fought back with everything we had, Krogan and human side by side, our weapons roaring in the confined space. I saw a super-soldier bearing down on me, his claws slashing for my throat. I ducked under the blow, driving my combat knife up under his chin. Orange blood sprayed as he fell, twitching. But for everyone we cut down, two more seemed to take their place. I heard Hawkins cry out, saw him fall, a smoking hole in his chest. I fought my way to his side, dragging him into cover, but one look at his wound told me it was bad, really bad, he pressed something into my hand, a small crystalline data drive. Everything we know about the coma, their weaknesses, it's all here. Use it. His eyes found mine, fierce despite the pain. Build the weapon, Jacob, it's our only, only chance. And then he was gone, 
his body going slack in my arms. I wanted to scream, to rage against the unfairness of it all, but there was no time. I pocketed the data drive, a new sense of purpose burning through my grief. We had what we needed. Now it was time to end this, once and for all. I rallied my remaining allies, and together we fought our way out of that hellish depot, leaving a trail of Komar bodies in our wake. We had struck a blow against our enemy, but the true battle was just beginning. In the weeks that followed, I pored over the data Hawkins had given me, learning everything I could about the Komar's weaknesses, and with the help of my team, I began to construct a weapon like nothing the galaxy had ever seen, a device that could harness the power of a miniature black hole, a weapon that could destroy entire planets. It was a desperate gamble, a last resort, but as word reached us of the Komar's final assault on Earth, I knew we had no choice. Humanity's homeworld was under siege, its defences crumbling. If we didn't act now, all would be lost. So we set our trap, luring the Komar fleet away from Earth with a decoy signal. They took the bait, chasing us into the depths of an asteroid field. And there, amidst the swirling rocks and dust, we unleashed our weapon. Space itself seemed to scream as the black hole tore open, an insatiable maw of darkness that dragged the Komar ships to their doom. I watched from the bridge of my ship as our enemy was crushed, pulverized into oblivion by forces beyond their comprehension. It was a victory, but one that tasted like ashes in my mouth. Earth was saved, but the cost had been high, too high. As I looked out over the ruined cities, the shattered remnants of our once proud civilization, I wondered if we had truly won anything at all. But one thing I knew for certain, humanity would rebuild. We would rise from the ashes stronger than before, for we had stared into the abyss and emerged unbroken. We had proven to the galaxy and to ourselves that we would never, ever surrender. I pause my tale, draining the last dregs of my drink. The weight of the memories hangs heavy on my shoulders. Fornax leans forward, his eyes wide with anticipation. But that wasn't the end, was it? he asks softly. The rebuilding of Earth was a daunting task, even with the Komar threat finally eliminated. Cities lay in ruins, millions had perished. Those of us who had survived, who had fought and bled to save our world, threw ourselves into the work of restoration. But amidst the rubble and the grief, a chilling discovery was made. The very weapon we had used to vanquish our enemy had wounded the universe itself. I remember the moment I was told, standing in the makeshift command center we'd set up in the ruins of New York. Dr. Eliza Volkov, our lead scientist, pulled up the sensor readings with shaking hands. It's a rift, she said, her voice trembling, a tear in the fabric of space-time, and it's growing. The blood drained from my face as I stared at the pulsing, malevolent anomaly on the screen. The rift was devouring stars, consuming entire systems, and we had created it. Eliza shook her head. I, I don't know, but we have to try. If that thing isn't stopped, it could destroy the entire galaxy. And so, even as we struggled to rebuild our shattered world, a new mission began. We gathered the greatest minds humanity had to offer, scientists, engineers, anyone who could help. We pored over the data, ran countless simulations, desperate for a solution. But we were racing against time. Every day the rift grew larger, more unstoppable, Planets were lost, whole civilizations wiped out in the blink of an eye. The weight of guilt was crushing. And then they came, the Komar or what was left of them. But they were changed, twisted by their defeat into something dark and cruel. Their eyes burned with zealous hatred, their bodies horribly mutated. And leading them was a face out of my nightmares, the sadistic captain. More machine now than Komar, his flesh fused with cybernetic enhancements. They struck without warning or mercy. Our labs, our shipyards, anywhere we were working to stop the rift, they attacked, slaughtering anyone in their path. They were fixated, obsessed with making us pay for their downfall. I watched my friends die, torn apart by Komar claws or incinerated by plasma fire. We fought back with everything we had, but they were relentless. It was like fighting a tidal wave of fanatic rage. 
but we couldn't give up. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Even as our losses mounted, we pressed on. We fortified, took our work underground, did anything to stay one step ahead of the Komar, and find a way to close the rift. Finally, after months of desperate work and sacrifice, we had it. A device that could seal the breach, mend the wound we had torn in the universe. But the Komar knew it too. In a final climactic battle, everything came to a head. We fought to protect the device, to buy enough time to activate it and end the threat of the rift once and for all. But the Komar threw everything they had at us. Waves of fanatical soldiers crashed against our defenses, threatening to overwhelm us through sheer numbers. And at the head of their charge was the captain, a whirlwind of blades and hatred. He smashed through our lines, cutting down anyone foolish enough to stand in his way. His goal was clear, the device. I intercepted him, my rifle blazing, knowing this was a fight I couldn't win but had no choice but to fight. We clashed in a storm of fire and blood, the fate of galaxies hanging on our desperate struggle. But even as I fought with everything I had, the captain's cybernetic enhancements gave him the edge. His blades found their mark, my blood splashing the deck. I fell to my knees, watching through hazy vision as he closed on the device. And then a miracle. Eliza, broken and bleeding, managed to initiate the device just as the captain's blades descended. The rift began to close, but the device, damaged by the Komar's attack, couldn't finish the job. There was only one option left. Someone had to take a ship into the heart of the rift, detonate their core at the right moment to destabilize the anomaly and seal it forever. I knew what I had to do. Even as my friends protested, I dragged myself to the nearest shuttle every step agony. There was no time for goodbyes, no time for anything but action. As I launched myself into the swirling maelstrom of the rift, I felt a strange peace settle over me. I had fought so long, lost so much. But if this was how I could save everything I held dear, then so be it. The heart of the rift was a nightmare of twisted space and howling energy, tearing at my shuttle, trying to rip it apart. But I held the course, my hands steady on the controls. At the right moment, I detonated the core, a sun blossoming to life in the dark heart of the rift, and then... You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.